The reason people dash as Jet is to create space for their team. The biggest issue here is that his team wasn't following him. What I mean by creating space is that once you dash, the enemies holding that choke point now have to worry about you. They will take their crossers away from the rest of your team, allowing your team to flush out and overwhelm the enemy. His next issue is he puts down two smokes and dashes into them. These smokes cut him off from sight and from his own breach. In doing so, he makes any engagement he or the breach take a 1v1. What he could have done is smoke more to the right at the top of those small stairs on A site. This would make any engagement a 2v1 if the enemy were to peek. It would also make the raise on site more flustered as they could walk through any part of the smoke to push her. On round 10, after rotating off of B as a team, it's safe to assume that Killjoy was not paying full attention to her yes, screen here as her mouse isn't moving. Mid. She's probably Race. checking her phone or talking to someone, but being absent-minded in a situation like this can prove costly. If someone had peaked A ramps, it would have been a 2v1 instead of a 3v1, most likely ending up poorly for the attackers as the Rays and Sage are not paying much attention to A ramps. A bad habit I often see is not really being present when not entry fragging. You think because you're second or third onto site that all the possible corners and angles have been cleared and that it's 100% safe to continue forward. Always check a few spots or watch an angle or two as your entry fragger could have missed somewhere or gotten timinged. Running with your knife out isn't beneficial in any way when you're not lagging behind your team trying to catch up. Our omen should have waited a bit on that flash onto the raise in B main. There was no real indication of her pushing out, and all that was shown on the minimap was Ray's in the doorway of B main. Had she actually been pushing out, it would have been a good flash. That was a very wide peek into mid after getting the pick on the Ray's in mid. It's very common for attackers on ascent, after showing presence in B main but not committing, to rotate through mid since the rotate through T spawn is a good 15 seconds longer. On round 4, after your smoke fades from vents, your crosshair is in a weird spot. It's not at head level and you just don't seem very engaged. I can tell this is because you can't decide what to do right now. You're watching vents, but you're indecisive on what to do next and are trying to decide. In a game like Valorant, it's very important to be decisive. It's better to be decisive and wrong than indecisive. Being indecisive in terms of positioning and where you're aiming can put you in some really tough situations. What you should have done is the moment your jet says there's one heaven, you walk to mail eyes glued on vents and then you catch them off guard and be heaven. You get those two picks earlier and you have a happy and healthy team. The enemy have no reason to watch mail for an extended period of time and are more worried about advancing onto the B site. Those first shots on the sage seemed like you shot before you aimed. Your crosser was pretty low and the moment the sage was on your screen, you pressed mouse one. You didn't adjust your crosser at all, even though she's not looking at you and you have time. Most people do this when they're not confident in their abilities in gunfights. They try to get any advantage they can, one of those being getting the first shot. This can cause further issues as if your first shots don't kill, you're stuck with recoil going all over the place by the time you put your crosser on the enemy's head. Right at the beginning of the round, you should have kept holding that angle on the cypher who just got the one dig down mid. You can expect that player to peek again. That player will always go for the clip and try to be the hero, especially in this rank. Only at higher ranks do players start to realize the downsides of peeking after a kill. What that does is give the enemy a chance to trade. You've just got a kill and now the enemy knows where you are, what weapon you have, and how much health you're at. In the time that you were behind cover, the enemy could have pushed up a bit, could have sat there holding the angle, or done anything else. You don't know. They're just way more prepared for that fight than you would be. It's better to just take that one-man advantage than take the risk of making it even again. On round 11, Jet ends up very low in the back corner of B. It's a 2v2 and the enemies know where both Jet and Omen are. Our jet does a phenomenal job jiggle peeking the sage and getting a wallbang headshot. You should always jiggle peek when low HP. Why? Well, the enemy will likely miss just as our friend here did on round 9 with the op. When jiggle peeking, you're not committing, unlike if you were to wide swing where, if you missed, you would die. Anything other than a jiggle or shoulder peek is certain death when one shot. And you being alive in a 2v2 is so much more important than peeking, especially when this low on health. Just the idea of you being there is such an advantage for you and your teammate. Because you're alive and in that back corner, they now can't freely use up that default area of B. They now have to worry about two guns and not just one. They can't gang up on the omen since you're alive and are able to shoot them. This is another instance of not capitalizing off of your flash. Not only should you always capitalize off of your flashes, you have to choose the right time to use them. You need to pick your flashes in the same way you pick your fights. Only use them when you know you can gain something out of it. 
you can't flash top mid and peak with a shorty because you think you need to capitalize off of it. And even though nothing came out of it, Omen did a good job using that Marshall shot onto the Killjoy turret as an indicator to peek out of the smoke. If she had a better weapon or some shields, it could have been a different story. It was the same outcome as if she had done a bad play, but the execution and discipline was there, so good job in that aspect. Some people might not like what I'm about to say, but it's the hard truth. If your Rays, Reyna, or even Jet has their ult active, you should go before them. Why, you may ask? Well, the entry is there to get information such as enemy locations, what weapons they have, and how many are on site. So, if your raise's main goal is to shoot a rocket at someone, it's best to know where they are, and the best way to do that, unfortunately, is to have a player go before them. I do this for my raise, Reyna, and Jet if they ask. I will never say no to them, and it helps to have an unselfish mindset. Even if the Rays did not have her ult active, Killjoy should have gone first. The health difference is enough. 24 versus 150 health. If there's a person with significantly lower health, that person should always go first, whether it's entering onto site or peeking when defending site. What agent they are and what abilities they have may affect that, but it differs case by case. Lurking with situational weapons like shotguns and snipers generally isn't a good idea as the whole reason you buy those weapons is because you want to be able to choose at which range you fight the enemy. If you buy a shotgun, you're going to sit in a very tight space where you have the advantage. If you buy a sniper, you're going to peek a long, narrow part of the map where you have the advantage. The ability to choose at which range your fights happen is out the window on a flank mission. You could have a shotgun and be peeked from A long to A lobby with a vandal. You could have a sniper and get jumped by someone sitting behind a corner and have to no-scope like your 65-year-old Muhammad Ali. When you choose to flank with weapons like these, you're gambling pretty hard. Then again, you very much so could get the situation you want and end up giving your team the advantage. In his Discord message, our Killjoy asked whether or not he should have gone back to his team, picked up a real gun, and helped his team from there. In Valorant, there are no rights or wrongs. It's all up to you. But, based on how the enemy team was playing, were they watching the flanks often, and if so, where from? Uh, it's still up to you. If you're feeling a bit cheeky, go for the flank and be ready to be disappointed. If you want the more safe play, go catch up with your team. This is a very good round in general. Jet did a perfect job of playing her role as Jet. She did a good job separating herself from her team and causing chaos with her smokes and dash. The noise of her dash forces the defenders to take some focus off of the entrance from B main, as if they don't, Jet has a vandal with their name on it. The smoke placement was almost perfect, just one issue. She placed the smoke at pillar and one just past it, closing off sight from the entering attackers. That one was perfect as it blocked vision from sight, but the first smoke should have been placed in the opening between B main and pillar where the defenders can hold from heaven and below heaven. This is because when you dash forward, you want to minimize how disoriented you are and when you dash into a smoke, you have to come out of the smoke with little knowledge of where enemies are and probably not so good cross replacement because of the chaos. You're also going to be a bit blind for a split second because of the effect when you come out of the smoke. But if you didn't do the furthest smoke on the actual bomb site, that smoke at pillar would have been good as it would have blocked the enemy on site from seeing anything as well as allowing for a safe dash because of that split second where you're pulling out your weapon. A smoke that Jet dashes into would be perfect if there wasn't already the natural cover of the pillar. For example, pushing onto C on Haven from long would be the perfect opportunity to smoke and dash into it, as there's no cover as you dash and you would be vulnerable in the open. Other than that small issue, which wasn't even really a mistake, this round gets a 9.5 out of 10 from me. As much as you want to play your role as Sage and go wall off CT, make sure to either drop the bomb first, or go plant and then wall. You overextending like that, even that tiny bit past the viper wall, can get you killed and you can drop the bomb in a not so good spot. I wouldn't be pointing this out if the viper wall wasn't there, but since the viper wall is up and splits the site clean in half, your teammates who are on the other side of the wall cannot help you. If an enemy were to peek, you'd be left there hands out like you're trying to fondle someone and your only help is your raise, who isn't in a very good position either. It's important to remember that the spike is the most important object in Valorant. Just like basketball has the ball, Valorant has the spike. Without the ball, there is no basketball, and without the spike, there is no Valorant. It's what makes the game work. If there was no spike, it'd be the attackers chasing the defenders around for two minutes, because all the defenders have to do is live. Next time, just drop the spike and tell your Viper to put down her wall so your team can support you while you wall off CT. 
After the spike is planted, you go sit in the corner of the cubby to the right of CT. It's a fine spot, but next time don't run to it. You're letting the enemy know exactly where you are. If that brim smoke wasn't there, you could make the argument that you wanted to minimize the time spent shift walking in the open, but since that smoke is indeed there, there's no reason for you to run there. You're in little to no danger. When your phoenix dies and drops the bomb in hookah, instead of taking that fight and risking dying and putting your team in a very disadvantageous position, you should utilize your agent, put a smoke down, grab bomb, and make your way towards the A bomb site. There is no reason for you to even put your head on their screen because you are so important to your team. You are the only one who didn't TP and they know that. If you die there, your team would have no info by the time they make their way towards the bomb, and when they do end up with it or are fighting for it, they would have very little time to do anything with it. You actually did end up dying because of all the time you wasted allowing the enemy omen to flank around long and catch you on the rotate. Your time wasting and not realizing the objective that mattered lost your team the round. You treated that smoke like it was some sort of impenetrable wall that people can't walk through, shoot through, or be waiting on the other side. You need to treat smokes like you don't know what's behind them. An enemy is probably behind every smoke waiting to catch a player off guard like they just did. A similar issue to this one is that oftentimes lower rank players assume that every part of the map is clear until proven otherwise when it should be the other way around. You should assume no place on the map is clear until you've checked every nook and cranny. It's sort of like the opposite of being innocent until proven guilty. Guilty until proven innocent. Enemy until proven not. Unless you have concrete evidence that an enemy isn't there, you should assume there is one. Your sage even called out one elbow. One elbow. That right there should be enough to put you on high alert for that whole area of elbow. And I understand that that's not elbow, but people have legs and can traverse the map. A good rule of thumb I go by is that if you don't know when a smoke was placed, treat it as if it only has one second left on its timer. Also, you ran towards sight with your molly out, which is a surefire way to get killed. Never pull out utility in the open when you're not protected. When your breach ulted, the enemy race threw a nade, thinking it would hopefully hold you back. You dashing through that completely negates what she tried to do and opens the site more for your team to take. Raise nades should not hold the same amount of fear when rushing as a molly does. They're perfect to run through and, if you're not jet, you can go around a corner once you're through to minimize damage. What dashing does here is create panic in the enemy. Before you dashed, all they had to worry about was the attackers coming out of B main. Now they have to worry about the other side of pillar, towards default. Omen held that angle onto top mid from a very bad spot. It's in between that mid cubby and market. Both spots have their pros and cons. From market, you have more options of where to go and watch, and are safer, but you can't watch the entirety of that top mid peak. From that bottom mid cubby, you have that full angle onto top mid, but you can't exactly escape as easily. That spot Omen died from was poor because although yes, it does give that full angle onto top mid, there is absolutely no cover and the scope of the marshal evidently blocks any view of enemies coming into mid from tiles. Omen also got tunnel vision on the enemy top mid and walked up a bit to get a better angle, probably not even realizing what she was doing. When peeking with an op at the start of the round like this, try to take note on if you're on the side that already has the positioning or the side that has to peek into the angle. If you're the side that has to peek into the angle, it's better in most cases not to slow peek. This is because the enemy already has good cross replacement and is ready. But if you wide swing with the op or jump peek and dash, you have a better chance of pulling off the upset. If you're the player who has the advantage and gets to hold the angle from the start of the round, sit there, preferably not crouched, and aim at about three-fourths of body width away from the corner at about stomach height. The reason to aim at stomach height is that you can get the kill whether they peek crouched or standing. If you aim too high, you won't hit the crouched player, and if you aim too low, you'll only lag the standing player. In that situation, when you have a cage that blocks short from your position, there's no reason to spam that. You didn't get any audio or visual cues that someone was in or near your cage and there's no logical reason for the Phoenix, or any player at that, to go where you spammed. The only two ways someone would realistically go is where the Phoenix went and towards sight on the other side of the boxes you're at. It's usually not a good idea to spam a smoke first unless you are fairly sure where the enemy is. Whether it's audio, your teammate sees them on the map, you saw them before the smoke, or any other similar situations. When you don't have any of that knowledge, don't spam so you won't get caught off guard like that. Starting on round 5, when the jet ran out of her knives, you took that as a free kill. You ran at her while your gun equip animation was still going on and you were very close to her. 
After a jet runs out of her knives, you can assume she has a pistol, meaning that she wants to engage in close quarters combat. To give yourself a better chance at winning, you need to take a longer fight and, in that situation where you have only a certain amount of space to work with because of the doorway, take it slow, clear in increments. Running at her is an act of surrender and a gift of a brand new state-of-the-art phantom rifle. Starting on round 1, you had complete tunnel vision on the Killjoy and Hookah from the moment you spotted her. You negated the fact that the raise was elbow and could have walked around CT where your shorty wielding teammate wouldn't have been any help since he was sitting behind a box or she could have peeked you from elbow, which she did. You're lucky she didn't peek out far enough or didn't get a good shot off. Last player standing. Since you knew Killjoy was Hookah, going into Cubby while reloading with no abilities left was a bad idea. You told her exactly where you were and you had no escape plan. No smokes, no flashes, and no TPs. Had she not rotated and stayed there, she would have been the favorite to win the round. Another thing I noticed is that you shoot very fast with the ghost. Try to slow down a bit as it gets inaccurate very quickly. This is a perfect example of what I was just talking about on round 17. And I didn't even write that after seeing this, Why it just worked like out. It's like Jet can hear me and took my advice mid-game. I mean, what else can I say, my advice is really out here changing lives. Jump peeking into an angle turns the tables and makes like you the more prepared one because you know what you're going to do and you know how you have to aim mid-jump to have good crosshair placement. They're the ones who have to react Why in a way they're not like expecting. At the end of the round, Jet double zoomed in. Never double zoom in, it's the bane of my existence. I can't count how many times I've died because I've double zoomed in. Don't ever double zoom in unless you're holding the longest, skinniest angle that only gives you a pixel. Don't do it, please. No, but seriously, it makes everything a lot harder. If it's an angle where you're going to have to move your crosshair even a tiny bit to get the kill, don't double zoom in. If all you have to do is click, double zoom in all you want. When you ulted, you ran onto sight with the molly out, trying to molly somewhere that wasn't an immediate threat to you. Why prioritize mollying octagon when that player doesn't matter right now? In Phoenix's ult, all you should care about is killing as many people as you can, as fast as you can. You're on a timer. By the time you reset your ult, the player long would have gotten a beard, grown up, had children, gone to college, graduated, got married, had six kids, died, came back to life, and gotten a res. Phoenix's ult is the perfect time to just hold W, flash and push out. No time for all this dilly dallying with a molly or jiggle peeking or anything, just go. Once your ult was done, you ran to sight with your knife out. There's no reason to think that in a situation like this, the enemy wouldn't be sneaking up on you. Every time you go back to your ult spot as Phoenix, you should expect someone to be near you. You should be on high alert. Honestly, every time I come back from a Phoenix ult and I don't get shot in the head while fixing my collar, I'm surprised. You don't need to be that aggressive when she taps the spike. Even if she is sticking it, she has 7 whole seconds to sit there twiddling her thumbs. A lot of players don't realize how long 7 seconds really is. Actually, let's sit here in silence for 7 seconds together. Just stare at the screen, don't go anywhere. Isn't that pretty long? She tapped it and you ran there and died in less than 4 seconds. In clutches, your heart may be pounding, your palms may be sweaty, your knees weak and your arms heavy, but you need to breathe, calm down, and think things through. Yes, there are 4 people watching you, but if you lose, they won't remember in 30 seconds, and if you win, they still probably won't remember. I mean, do you remember every time someone won or lost a clutch from your last game? No didn't think so. So stop overthinking things so much and go win that clutch. On round 14, if your goal is to get a kill with the shorty, there's no need to overextend. You place that smoke there for a reason. You want them to come into your space and you get a free pick and a free gun. The moment you walk out of the smoke, you're at the disadvantage. 99% of fights are now going to be out of your range. Smokes are prime shorty territory because the enemy comes into a very confined space and has a split second of no vision allowing you to get a good shot off. Don't get antsy or impatient because you have to wait for them to come to you. Going towards them usually won't end well for you. You should have a mental timer of your smokes in your head so you can back out and retreat or back out and place another smoke and sit in it again. Some of you may not like what I'm about to say, but it's the truth. Don't scope in with rifles. It's obviously a choice and you'll hear all these tips and tricks and guides channels tell you that it's all about preference but I'm the one who's going to say it, don't do it. 
Obviously some weapons have different firing modes when scoped in, but that's an exception. The only times you should be scoping in is when it's really, really long range. You're holding a super tight angle, and I'm talking a few pixels here, and if you have bad eyesight or a very small monitor. Even when going for one taps, you shouldn't really do it, as it's a different type of recoil. If you go for that wall to block off Reyna and the C sight, you need to just place it. There's no time for perfection here. There's no time to think to yourself if there will be a gap or not. It's debatable whether or not you should have even placed the wall, but once you've committed, you've committed. Once you've rotated it, it should have been placed in like a fifth of a second. There's a decent chance that she'll ride the wall up if you take any longer, because it's almost guaranteed that she'll peek. She's a silver 3 Rana who just got 2 kills in very quick succession. She's gonna peek and go for the 3k. I know it's only the 6th round and you don't know much about individual players yet, but she picked Reyna. Players who pick Reyna are usually confident in their skills as a player and want to frag out and will be very aggressive. On round 10, crouching got you killed. Had you stayed standing, you would have had time to go back to cover, reset your recoil, and try again. I used to crouch at every engagement too, so to fix that I changed my crouch bind from control to something like J or K. What that does is make me not crouch instinctively, yet allow me to crouch with my thumb if I really really need to. I only do this in unrateds or DMs. Doing it in DMs is incredibly helpful since crouching too much could seriously be stunting your improvement. Crouching also makes you an easier target, as you're less mobile and more of your hitbox is your head. 